So I'm sure that you all have experienced this. You look at a woman and you think, oh my gosh, her skin is just so gorgeous. And you give her a compliment like that and then you find out her age, whether it's over 40, 50, 60, 70 plus, and you're going, there's no way. There's no way that that woman is that age. She has obviously had Botox, fillers, she's had a facelift, she's had something done, and then you find out, no, she's never had anything done, and you go, well, okay, well then you have good genetics. You have, you know, good genes and stuff like that. So. What I'm here to talk about today is not what are the habits that those women do that are older that have amazing skin. And there are some things that women really try hard to do and they have to work at it. I am one of those women that does not naturally have good skin. As a matter of fact, thank goodness for makeup. Otherwise, I'd look like the crib keeper every day and I would just I, it would be bad, but I love my makeup. But the thing is, is I value my skincare. So I'm going to be sharing with you 11 essential habits that older women with amazing skin always do. And if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to do that. It really does help me and I really appreciate it. So let's get into those 11 amazing habits right now. The first one is they always cleanse twice a day. That is so essential for anybody that has good skin. The reason is, is in the morning, you want to rejuvenate your skin from everything that it's done through the night. During the night, our skin repairs itself. And we put a lot of creams on it or we put a lot of oils on it. And what we wanna do in the morning is we wanna wake it up. So we cleanse all of this stuff off that we have before we start doing anything else. And that's so important to take off whatever oils, whatever creams, any serums, anything you've put on it the during the night in order for your skin to be able to receive what you're going to put on it in the morning. So then at night, it's so very vital to cleanse our skin because we have makeup on, we have all the pollutants on that we've faced during the day when we were out and about. We have free radicals, you know, attacking our skin. We have our, our sunscreens and everything. We want to take all of that off again so that our skin, once again, can receive really good skincare. And if you don't, if you just slapped on skincare on top of that, it's not going to penetrate at all. The second thing that women with amazing skin do is they never leave their house without their sunscreen. I know we get talked to about this until we're ad nauseum. Everybody talks sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. But I am living proof that if I had started sunscreen in my 20s, my skin would be much better. I really only incorporated sunscreen about eight years ago and I noticed that my aging slowed dramatically down and that is such a huge, huge deal. So I want to reiterate to you that you please put sunscreen on every part of your skin that is exposed. If you're wearing your hair up, it's not just your face, it is the back of your neck, your neck all the way over the chest. This is where my worst sun damage is done, right here on my chest, because that's where the, the sun hit me and also along my hairline where I have a lot of, I used to have a lot of sun damage before I started using Retin-A, but also your ears and the back of your hands and all the way up your arms. Hands can show our age almost faster than our face can because we have a tendency to forget them. So make sure you put sunscreen everywhere that's going to be seen by the sun and especially if it's going to be for any prolonged period and make sure that you reapply after two hours. That's another thing that they highly suggest and it's another thing that really slows down the aging process. The, the third thing is these women have a consistent skincare routine. So they don't skip around. So let's say, oh, I'm too tired, I don't feel like it. So three days out of the week, they don't take their makeup off at night and do their skin care. Or they wake up late in the morning and they just slap their makeup on um, without taking off whatever they've had on the night before. And you know, say that you're doing that, you know, a couple times a week or say that you're doing it uh, like a handful of times a month. It doesn't work that way. Skincare is, uh, an accrued thing, something that builds upon itself. So if you're skipping those very vital days when maybe your skin needs more than it normally has, maybe you have 
gone into a polluted area where the air is just really polluted and you haven't even realized that. But a woman that has a consistent routine where she will never ever skip morning and night, she is going to develop pretty skin because she is taking care of that skin all the time. It is never neglected. It to me personally, it's like brushing my teeth. I don't go without doing it. If I am going to brush my teeth in the morning and at night, I am going to do my skincare because I want my skin to look as nice and be as healthy as my teeth are. <laughs> Consistency in skincare is the key because that's where you're going to see results built up over time and that is so very important. The number four I think is so valuable for us all is that the woman that has amazing skin and she's older, she tends to spend more on skincare than she does on makeup. And you'll find that when you come to my channel, I am very drugstore oriented when it comes to makeup, but when you get into my skincare, yes, I do show you really good affordable options, but most of my skincare is costing more. I And I don't mean like it's costing me a fortune, like uh, Drunk Elephant or Sunday Riley or those kinds of things my, La Mer might cost you. I'm just talking about it costs a little bit For more. For instance, like right now, Secret Key is one of my favorites. And I spend more on this bottle of essence than I would spend necessarily on a bottle of foundation or a bottle of primer. And I think that's really important thing for me to say and this is kind of my motto really pretty makeup comes from really great skincare and I think that that is really the point that I finally took away is that don't skimp on your your skincare you can take some makeup and realize that it doesn't have to cost a ton of money if you're into high-end makeup nothing wrong with that but make sure that you're investing in your skincare as well and I think that that is really important for all of us to remember is that skincare has to take the precedent otherwise all the makeup in the world that is high-end and that is really beautiful makeup isn't going to make a heap of difference because our skin is already not looking that great and what you put on top of it can't look that great. So I think that's really important. Number five is the woman that has amazing skin understands her ingredients. And when I talk about this, I'm, talk about, I'm talking about understanding what different ingredients can do for your skin. Retin-A and what it can do, niacinamide, exfoliants like BHA and AHA, also vitamin C, vitamin E, ferulic acid. What can all these things do for our skin? And why do we need them? Hyaluronic is another one that people are just learning they need to put on their skin, but they need to have water on their skin or moisture on their skin for hyaluronic acid to build on. So those are products that are really essential, but also what are the products that are gonna damage you? Learn about alcohols, learn about parabens, learn about fillers, learn about fragrance. All those things we understand and we can understand why to use certain things and why not to use certain things. Now I'm going to suggest to you right now because this gal knows her ingredients. It is Penny from Penn Smith Skincare. I will link her channel below. If you wanna know anything about ingredients, her brain and the way that she processes things and she breaks them down for us lay people, I think is just amazing. So. We really want to be cognizant of that and make sure that we're putting on the right ingredients and not putting on the bad ingredients. The next essential habit is number six, and that is know when to switch things up. Okay, this is really important because if something's not working for us, then we need to change it. And I'll give you an example. Let's say that you've just switched over to the highest Retin-A that you can buy, which is the 0.1% Trentinoin or Retin-A. Let's say that you've just switched that up and you're using it every night and all of a sudden, your skin is flaking and it is irritated and it is stinging and it hurts. What it, what's going on? Why do I need to switch at that point? You need to give your skin a rest. So that's just one example of knowing when to switch things up. The other thing is, is maybe you've been using a product for a long time, like 0.25% of Trentinoin or Retin-A, and you notice that my skin's not really looking as good as it did when I first started using that. So it may be a sign that you need to bump that up. Now, you may have allergies to things. So when you put something on your face, you may break out terribly. So you would want to watch that too. So 
Anytime you're incorporating something new, you want to watch for signs of it doing good or bad on your skin. Is this clogging my pores? Is it opening my pores? Do my pores look more refined? So asking those questions, taking a good look at your skin and really trying to switch things up that work for you. Because you can watch all the YouTube influencers, gurus that you want to about skincare and you can put something on your skin, it might not work at all. Now what works for me might be really good for a certain amount of people, but it might not be good for that one or 2% of the people out there. And my biggest suggestion in this category is don't try to switch everything up at once. Do one thing. You know, if you feel like your retin-A is not working anymore and you wanna bounce that up, do one thing. And you might have to look at some things that you're doing that you might need to take away. Maybe the things that you thought were gonna be fantastic and you might need to take those away. So she knows when to switch up her skincare routine. Number seven, this is not a, an absolute tried and true have to do, but I found this one to be really essential is pat your products in instead of rubbing. Now why? When we're tapping around our eyes, that even can do a really good job of just delivering that a little bit deeper into our skin cells instead of just rubbing once like this and you're done. And that really does help, you know, if you're patting something in like this, you're really, kind of pushing it into the pores. If you're rubbing like this, sometimes it can create sort of a inflammation at times if people have sensitive skin. And you know, on my neck, I actually do rub up like this because I feel like on my neck because I need to always be lifting those products I don't want my neck to sag anymore. But even on your neck, you know, I have a lot of sagginess right through here and then I have the banding right through here from the wrinkles. Even on my neck, on those really crucial products like Retin-A, Vitamin C, I will have a tendency to push those products in instead of rubbing them in and it's so important. Now, if you're doing niacinamide and you're trying to get, you know, your pores minimized, Patting those products like this can be so beneficial because you're patting that product into the pores. And like I said, again, even patting around the eyes, patting motion can also bring up the blood supply too, especially when it's done with your fingertips because you're really, you know, kind of just pushing the product in and that um, triggers the blood supply to come up to that area. So pat in those products. Number eight, and some of us have chronic illnesses and this can be hard for us, but this is really essential. The women that have really good skin, they get enough sleep. And that is approximately seven to nine hours a night. And the reason is, is because that's when our skin rejuvenates itself. At night, our body will shut down and it will repair our cells. That's why when I was getting really a lot of problems with pain and inflammation and wasn't sleeping really well, I felt crappy all day long. Our skin will feel crappy too if we don't give it enough time to rejuvenate. So getting enough sleep is truly essential. I suggest that you get into a sleep routine. That's what finally helped me really conquer my sleeping habits. I was staying up because I didn't feel good. I'd stay up till like two o'clock in the morning and then I'd wake up at five, couldn't go back to sleep and then I'd go back to sleep at seven, sleep till 11. It's just really not good for our skin. It needs those total certain amount of hours in order to rejuvenate and get that deep repair that we can only get from sleep. Number nine is these women eat a really well-balanced diet of fruits and vegetables, enough protein, and enough foods that contain the omega fatty acids. Vegetables are where we get tons of vitamins from. We can get lots of vitamins from green leafy vegetables. We get lots of vitamin A from carrots. You know, you can kind of, you know, research the different vegetables and what you get from those, but those are really good in giving us our vitamins. The fruits are our antioxidant foods. Those are the foods that fight off different things that come on board in our bodies and our skin. So from the inside out is what we're looking at here. Proteins are the building blocks of our whole entire body. So you need enough protein. Collagen that everybody is so worried about getting into our skin and building in our skin is what gives us this plump factor. That is actually a protein. Collagen molecule is built from a protein. So you wanna get enough protein. Omega fatty acids are so good for our whole entire body, but especially our skin. And I just wanna recommend that you take a supplement if you feel like you're somebody that really doesn't like eating those kinds of things, nuts, fish, those kinds of things, flax seeds, then take an omega supplement. Same thing with vegetables and fruits 
fruits. You're wanting to get all of those daily requirements. Protein is a tricky one because we have to ingest it. So, you know, you need to be eating protein no matter what. Um, you can't really take a supplement for protein. You can do the protein shakes and stuff, but it's really not a substitute for eating foods that actually have really good proteins in them. And whether you're vegan or whether you go ahead and you eat meat, you can get that from all kinds of different foods. You don't have to be one or the other in order to be able to get a really good protein in your diet. Now that number 10 is they drink the good stuff. And what do I mean by that? Green tea is an antioxidant that is so powerful and can be so helpful in helping our skin. It, it has so many good things in it and it can fight off so many bad things. You know, it is one of those antioxidant teas that is just fantastic. Herbal teas are good for that too, but I have found that green tea, there's just no substitute for it for me. It just helps in so many ways. Also, water, 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 water. We hear it over and over again. Our bodies are comprised of water. Every time I talk about water, I ask you to take the challenge of drinking those eight, eight fluid ounces of water a day and see what happens to your skin over the period of two weeks. You would be pleasantly surprised what happens. I do have two products that I wanna share with you that I do put in my water and drink every day. And I am not saying that you have to go out and get this, but there are certain things that have I feel like have helped me. Now this doesn't just help my skin this helps my nails and my hair as well and they're good for your bones too and this is my big huge mega tub of marine collagen peptides that I get off of HSN and this is from Andrew Lessman this is a little bit more on the pricey side but if you break this down into the servings that you get and how much it would cost you per day it is really not that much and I'll make sure that I link that for you and they have sales on this stuff almost monthly so if it's not on a sale don't worry about getting it you can get it when it is on the sale you can sign up for emails and have them sent sent out to you off of HSN but there's a lot of really good ones even on Amazon if I were going to look for one that was a little bit less expensive than this one I would first just go over and look at the presentation that Andrew Lessman does on HSN they have his videos on these specific products and I go over and look at his video and then you can kind of get a feel for what kind of collagen you're looking for because there's so many kinds of collagen really truly there is you guys so this is a fantastic product it has helped me through so many times when my hair has been falling out and I felt like my skin has been so bad so I really do love this I use it every single day and there's so many people that use collagen but not very long ago when I did a video about my hair falling out a, a very sweet subscriber she said do silicone, silica, Melissa, and you will notice a difference. And I picked this one up off of Amazon. And again, this is one that is not cheap. But again, I feel like what we put into our body shouldn't be something that is full of fillers. It should just be the product. So I picked this up and you guys, I cannot even tell you how fast my hair started growing back in when I started using this. It was phenomenal. So this will be linked for you for sure. And the other one will too. And I know that, you know, not everybody can afford these price tags. I think this one is like $50 and I'm not exactly sure even, oh, it says 67 servings. So that would be two months. So to me to spend $25 a month, Really, honestly, you guys, I spend more than that eating out sometimes at one meal. Not for just for myself, but you know, I mean, honestly, you could say that so easily and get something that is so very beneficial for yourself. And I am just a huge proponent of this. And I thank you, you knew who you are. And I thank you so much for saying that because it has really changed the game for my hair, but also for my skin. And number 11, you guys, I am going to just, this is where the buck stops, right here on number 11. These women that have amazing skin and they're older, they embrace aging. And this is huge, you guys, because I feel like there are certain things that unless you do have the money to go out and get a facelift, Botox, fillers, constant, you know, dermabrasion, whatever, you really can't change. Mine for me is my terrible, terrible, deep wrinkles around my eyes because I smile all the time. And I have these marionette lines right here too. And I have lines across my lips too. And I have bands across my neck too. Those are things that sometimes you just can't get away from. But 
as I get older, this year I'll be 52 years old, and as I get older, I'm realizing that even though it bugs me, I'm not saying it doesn't, and even though I would like to have something done with them, embracing aging and realizing that I deserve these wrinkles because they are almost like a badge of honor. I've been through a lot in my life, and I've raised my children. I've raised three children with chronic illness. I've had chronic illness myself. I've been through a very bad abusive marriage, and I have been through parents being very ill at times and different really tragic things happening in my life. I lost my sister a few years ago and she was very young, 57 years old. So I have been through a lot as I'm sure that all of you have and I'm sure that many, many of you, because we talk about this all the time, many of you are even going through very, very deep crisis right now. And with everything going on in the world and right now we're all isolated, we all have these stressors in our life and they do show up on our face in our aging process. But if you can just look at yourself and say, it's okay. It's okay that I can't have perfect under eye concealer like a 20 year old does. I'm 50 years old. I'm never going to have that. I have bigger pores. I have things, you know, saggy skin that I don't like. We're not going to be able to turn the clock back like that. It just can't happen. But we can do the very best that we can with what we have and try to be content with those things. Try to be happy in ourselves. Try to be proud of ourselves. I will link the video that I just did very recently where it talks about 10 things you can do to feel prettier and more attractive. It actually said instantly look prettier and more attractive, but it's more about how we feel about ourselves. And that can come across too in our everyday. So I encourage all of you to embrace where you are. If you're in your 50s and you're starting like I am through menopause and all of those changes that that brings, Hit it head on and embrace it. Just say, I'm going to win this. I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to take the very best care of my body that I can. Wherever you're at, embrace that age. Embrace how you look. Be proud of yourself. Take care of yourself and go forward. And don't bemoan what was in the past. I wish I'd done this when I was in my 20s. I wish I'd done that when I was in my 30s. Don't bemoan any of that. Just look at the future and embrace it. It is what it is and we are fierce, mature women. We can take care of ourselves and we can be the very best we are right now and just embracing where we're at and being happy with where we're at. So that is my last tip, my last essential tip that women always do that have amazing skin that are older. I hope that you did enjoy this. I hope that you realize that this is so important to all of us. And I didn't talk a lot about products because I feel like, yes, products are essential, but what we do, how we practice everything that we're supposed to as we age is just as essential as the products that we have. So please give this video a thumbs up. I hope that you did enjoy it. You guys, I know that we're all shut in. I know that things are, you know, we watch the news and it's just like, ugh, what's gonna happen next? But, but you know what? We're gonna be okay. We're all gonna be okay. We're all gonna get through this together. You know, they call us influencers, beauty influencers, uh, people across social media, they call them influencers. But what I really want is for you guys to be informed. Be your own best advocate. Take care of yourselves. Don't be influenced, be informed. And I think that's gonna be my motto going forward from now on. So everyone, please take care of yourselves. Have a wonderful, blessed day. And if there are bad things going on in your life, know that my thoughts and prayers are with you. And we need to all try so hard to lift each other up and help each other through this really difficult time that everybody's going through. Thank you so much for spending a part of your day with me. I love you all so very much. And I'll catch you in my very next video. Bye, guys. <laughs>